Alright, welcome back to Monkey Wrench Engineering in the KSP 1.05 tutorial series. Uh, we're going to do our first manned landing on the moon. Uh, I think everybody's probably got the uh, the beauties of takeoff and orbit figured out, so we're going to skip the fact we've got our, our ship in orbit, circularized, and we have a maneuver node set up to take us onto our moon intercept. Um, this vehicle, of course, had a little more thrust because we're moving a lander that you can't see because it's in the dark to the moon. Um, designing those is half the fun. I'm actually not going to break down in detail designing a moon lander. Make sure, as usual, you have enough delta V to do it. That being the case, let's get to the moon and do some of the fun stuff. You can pull up your nav ball on the map screen, which is great. You can actually control the ship from here, which is incredibly useful. Especially on something like this, we can get into the moon, look at our potential orbital track, line up our ship, which we're doing, onto the target for the burn. And you can literally run everything from here with the nav ball. So we'll time accelerate until we are near to the burn. Oh, which is interestingly not showing the amount of time needed. So about a minute out from the burn, I will briefly hit full power. It shows the burn at 2 minutes 46 seconds. Well, perfect. Why are we drifting? We're drifting off of our marker. That's interesting. Shouldn't. This is an absolutely symmetrical ship. It really doesn't have an excuse to do that. And we're missing our burn because of it, so we're going to have to do some corrections. It's about a 600 delta V burn. So we have plenty of fuel in the transfer stage to do this and make orbit. Probably too much, to be honest. And it's definitely possible to have too much fuel if you're jettisoning a stage without using all the fuel. You've carried weight for no reason. Keep your heading on your target, or as near as you can. Nice, that's a 62 kilometer. Periapsis at the moon. So we will go ahead and warp out to the moon sphere of influence. Which also gets us in the sun. You'll see the lander is very basic. I have a Mark I lander can, Science Junior, Science Equipment, a couple of the new and improved folding solar panels. Uh, Engine-wise, we've got a t central terrier and we have three sparks on these outer sponsons. These fuel tanks are on radial decoupler so we can ditch them once we leave the moon. Uh, rather than using standard folding landing gear, I'm actually using aircraft landing gear because they have a much higher impact rating and they're not markedly heavier. Oh, Jeb is now ready to make orbit. And again at the periapsis, adding maneuver node and applying retrograde. Ooh, retrograde thrust, thrust. Ah, come on, circularize you. Close enough. So that's showing a 1 minute 48 second burn. Warp a little closer. And align ourselves retrograde. I did not put any RCS systems on this ship. I'm depending on the reaction wheels for maneuverability. A little difficult with this transfer stage, which is very heavy. I've severely overbuilt it. We still have half of our total fuel. But that's okay. That just means it's going to be a bit slow. Uh, 
so landing on the moon we're going to want you'll note that I have a bunch of probes left over all over the moon from earlier non-manned missions I've run out here with our manned mission to the moon we're going to want to kill as much of our lateral velocity as we can before touching down since the moon does not have an atmosphere we can do a fair bit of that before we actually even attempt to land. I'm going to bring our periapsis down. I don't want to hit a mountain, but 18,000 meters is dandy. The ship has plenty of ability to break at that speed. So let's go ahead and do that. Again, with the maneuver node in place, we're going to warp to just before the maneuver node. Again, nothing too fancy here. It's going to be a retrograde burn, so we'll actually just let the ship turn around on the retrograde. We can alt greater than, less than to speed that up a bit if we want, which we will. This is a three second burn, so it's a tiny burn. Nineteen thousand is just fine. So now we're in a nice low orbit of the moon. We're not quite equatorial, but that's fine. We're not terribly worried about where we land as long as we land somewhere and survive. So we will go ahead and quick save. Um, let's go ahead and land in the giant crater on this side. You're going to want to kill almost all of your lateral velocity initially on this approach. So we're adding a maneuver node more or less right over our desired target. And we're applying retrograde so that we've got a very steep we're going to break and drop nearly vertically in. As a matter of fact let's really crank that. Uh, we may end up landing in a subcrater. Let's hope we miss that. If not it will be lots of drama and fun. So that's a 51 second burn. We've still got a ton of fuel in this transfer stage and we're not going to get rid of it yet. We're going to use it just as much as we can. So let's go ahead and accelerate time. Get around to the sunny side of the moon. And about four or five minutes out from our next node. Let's make sure that we are oriented. Without RCS it does take the reaction wheels a while to turn something this heavy, so you do have to keep that in mind. Get some lovely views of the moon here. Hopefully you're noticing that the frame rate is far better and the moon is much prettier. I do have a new video card in the computer. And it is making my life far easier. So there's our uh, there's our actual target marker. So you know what let's do. Since we are in a position to do so, we'll line ourselves up on our target marker. It's a 51 second burn. We want to be pretty precise because we do want to land more or less where we've uh, chosen. So try to center yourself as precisely as possible on that. And we're three minutes out. We're going to F5 and quick save so that if this all goes terribly badly, we can pick it up again. We obviously can't land with the transfer stage intact, but know, let's, we're clicking retrograde now. We're almost at a complete stop. We burned a little early intentionally. I was kind of worried about 
landing in a uh, crater. So we're dropping nearly vertically to the surface of the moon now. We're going to have a fair amount of delta V to get rid of on the way down. We're already, we were almost stopped. We're back to 62 meters per second. Your safe speed for landing, you should definitely be aiming for under 5 meters per second, uh, especially if you're using absolutely stock landing gear. Like I said, I'm using aircraft landing gear, um, which also being the case, I will turn the brakes on so that the wheels don't roll. But I think we will keep the transfer stage on for a little bit because we're going to use some of its fuel to slow down before ditching it. You do If you do this, definitely ditch the transfer stage before you're too close to the ground or you may end up landing on it. Um, I don't think we're going to have anything useful. Well, you know, the surface info in MechJeb is a useful, a useful feature. Um, it's showing our true attitude is 12 kilometers. That's, despite the 13 kilometers here, it's actually only 12 kilometers to the rocks on the surface. So lined up retrograde. And you'll notice retrograde's not purely axial to the planet. We are coming down at a slight angle. One of the reasons I'm burning retrograde as we fall right now, even as high as we are, is to try to bring our drop closer to absolute vertical. Our actual altitude is just under 8 kilometers and dropping. We're going to throttle up and try to lose some of this fabulous velocity we've got going. 6 kilometers. 5 kilometers. I'd probably save that a little late, but that's okay. There we go. Burning your engine all the way down like this is incredibly wasteful. However, we have an incredibly over large amount of fuel. However, I've slowed us down enough that I don't feel like waiting, so we'll shut off the engines again. Let our speed build back up. I mean, a rule of thumb, if you're watching your altitude and you keep your meters per second at about a tenth of that and keep adjusting it all the way down. Theoretically, you should stop when you reach the uh, the actual surface. Right now we're at 3.6 kilometers, 3.5, we're at 37 meters per second, which is very slow for this altitude, but hey, not a problem. We are low enough, however, I think we're going to go ahead and ditch that transfer stage. And we will trigger our actual lander. Let's hope that blows up, otherwise we're going to land on top of it. 50 meters per second will slow down a bit. Now we are burning fuel in our lander now, so we can't be quite as wasteful. under a kilometer, so let's slow down. There's the ground right there. We are now descending at a sedate 7.3 meters per second. Steady. It's interesting. We've actually managed to balance perfectly. Our distance to the ground is 180 meters and closing. Looking for your shadow is good. There's our shadow. We are going to want to be going a little slower than this when we touch down, and we're going to want to immediately cut the engines upon touching down. We are now decelerating to 5, 4, 3, 2, let's not slow down that much, 1.54, 1 1 point, 1 1.3 and steady, 1.2. 1.1, this will be the world's softest landing, 1.0, 0.9, 0.8, 0.7, 0.6, 0.5, 0.4, 0.3, 0.4, 0.5, 0.6, 0.7, 0.8, 0.9, 0.10, 0.11, 0.12, 0.13, 0.14, 0
reapply, cut engines. Welcome to the moon. And then F5 in case you do something silly. Yay, Jeb has made it to the moon. Huzzah. It is time to do science. We'll observe the mystery view and save that data. We'll observe the materials bay. And we'll save that data. See, that's a hundred science by itself. Uh, Jeb can do a crew report. We'll go ahead and transmit that immediately. We've also oh, why do we have a contract failed? Oh, because I blew up I blew up the ship I had uh, <laughs> earlier. Okay, so Jeb has done a crew report. Let's run the barometer, log pressure data, save that. Log temperature data, save that. And Jeb can be the first Kerbal to EVA on the moon. Matter of fact, he can do an EVA report right here over the surface of the moon. Keep the data. Store that experiment in the capsule. One small step for a Kerbal kind. One falling off the ladder for a Jeb. There we go. A little tick about Jeb. Very well done. L is lights on the suits, which we don't need since it's lovely and sunny. We'll do an EVA report on the surface, save the data. We'll take a surface sample, a massive 120 science for some moon rocks. And to get Jeb some, some experience, we'll plant a flag. One of the better things you can do for pilot experience. Moon landing one. Jeb was here. There, congratulations, Jeb. R, of course, is your rea little reaction backpack. Since we don't have the nice folding ladders yet, he actually had to use that to get up to the ladder, or you could just jump. And we'll board. Excellent. We don't need surface info anymore. Well, we have loads of fuel, which is nice. We have a goo canister we have not done anything with. And we, and we actually have enough fuel. We could hop to elsewhere on the moon and do more science, but Jeb's not a scientist. He can't save the experiment data and we'd just be overriding what we have so instead let's go ahead and head back to Kerbin. F5 we'll go full thrust we will try to remember to after the fact turn on uh, SAS again no atmosphere on the moon you can lay over and start getting velocity very quickly with minimal gravity losses. Yeah, you'll see we're really rapidly climbing, so let's go ahead and flatten out. Let's try not to blow up our panels and get those in before they melt. Yeah, we're coming in much hotter than I'd intended to. But we do have a ton of fuel, so let's uh, let's actually cheat. Do a uh, little SpaceX re-entry burn here. We've got so much fuel, we're actually going to be able to take all this excess excess velocity off. Normally you'd want to enter at a shallower angle and simply aerobrake, 
since we have the fuel, why not? You know what, let's hit F5. We might be able to land and save that Terrier engine if we get extremely lucky. Landing in the sunset. 6.6, eh, we might blow that engine up. Nope, got away with it. Oh, lovely. And balanced it on the engine. That's a win all the way around. Mm, if we turn SAS off, it may fall over. So I am thinking we will go ahead and recover vehicle from there. We picked up, <laughs> we earned 376 science on that moonshot. Recovered 9,000 parts, which isn't bad on a 60,000 funds rocket. Um, Jeb gained some experience points, but it did not say he leveled, which is slightly depressing. And we returned home from the surface of the moon. Jeb, did you not level up? Jeb did not level up, but he's close. So we've got 1.8 million in the bank, 482 science. Uh, in the interim mission, which I did not record, as you saw, I picked up advanced electrics to get the good solar panels. Um, mostly so, we can also have the good batteries in order that we can power our mobile processing lab, which we're going to research now. Yay, we have a mobile processing lab and we have better ladders. We have 322 science left. We're going to be throwing a heavier rocket up next time. We're going to be moving a mobile processing lab, um, landers, and the rest to Minmus, hopefully. So I am going to pick up uh, heavy rocketry and pick up the mainsail liquid engine, which is a ridiculously powerful engine and very much fun. Um, we do have We do have sufficient large tanks, so let's not worry about fuel yet, but we will pick up specialized construction uh, for the docking ports. We're going to put a small space station around Minmus with the research lab as part of it, and we're going to be using that to uh, crunch science data for us. Or optionally, we can put the space station in orbit around Kerbin. Uh, but in either case, we'll want docking ports just to make life, e life easy and to, uh, if nothing else, to show how you do docking manually. So we'll research that. Leaves us with 2.3 science, which is not enough to do anything with, but that's fine. So until next time, uh, thanks for watching. I'm Mike, this is Monkey Wrench Engineering, and uh, we'll see you around Minmus in the next video. Bye-bye.